Hi, this is a new set of videos all about, <laughs> I know you can't wait to hear what this is about, um, loading images in processing. Looking at the pixels of those images, what if those images are video images coming from a live camera, coming from a movie file, what are the kinds of things we can do to load, display, manipulate, process, analyze images and pixel data in processing. So that's what this set of videos will be about. There's maybe going to be somewhere between five and nine of them. And uh, what we're going to do here in this first one is just start with the total and complete basics. The very first thing we need to do in processing uh, to display an image on the screen is have some sort of variable that can store a reference to all the information associated with that image. The variable that we're going to need, we're going to need is going to be of type p image. P image. <laughs> P image is a new data type. I mean, you, you've probably seen it before. Maybe you haven't. It doesn't really matter. The point is there is a P image class. Just like at one point or another, we wrote a bubble class or a ball class or a frog class. We wrote all, we're writing classes to encapsulate information and data to store stuff that we want to move around the screen. This is a case where we don't need to write a class to store all the information about an image. This is a class that's built into processing uh, for us and we can just make objects. We can make instances of p-image objects. So we have a variable, let's just call it i and g. It's of type p-image. Now, how are we going to fill that variable? We need an image. There are lots of possibilities here. We could make a blank image and set all the pixels of that image according to some algorithm. We could pull an image from the web, from an API, from Google Image Search, Flickr, from any sort of uh, service that you could imagine. We could, or what I think we'll do right now, which is the simplest thing, is just load an image from the hard drive. Let's just get an image that we have on our computer. We want to load that image up and put it into our processing sketch. So how do we do that? This is something, a, a point that I want to make is this is a case where the code we're about to write to load this image should really happen in setup. Pulling the image off of a hard drive, loading it into memory so that the computer can draw it into the screen, this is a slow process. Sure, we might want to draw it continuously, that will happen in the draw function, but that process of getting it into first place is something we want to do at the beginning of the program. Obviously, there's lots of other circumstances where as the program's running, we want to retrieve some images and we'll at some point hopefully look at some other scenarios. But for right now, for our purpose, we simply want to say load image and then we need can you see all this i think you can we need the file name to go in here the file name is going to be a string which means the characters that make up the name of that file inside quotes now where's this file coming from processing sketches if you, you've probably seen this before but just in case you haven't processing sketches are this this sketch that i have called image one it lives somewhere on my computer uh, in fact i can go up here to sketch uh, show sketch folder, and now I have uh, in the finder, I have my sketch folder right here. And there's the file that has all the code for my stuff. <laughs> so I want to make a folder that goes in here called data. This data folder, this is where I'm going to put images. I want to put things, assets, things that I want to load. It could, uh, later we're going to see data files, sound files, movie files, all sorts of things. Font files can go in there. Anything that I want to load and use in my processing sketch, da the data folder is a good place to put it. Once we have an image in that data folder, we can load that image and we've got a reference to it in the variable. Now, an image is an object. What is an object? It's a thing <laughs> that encapsulates, that brings together data and functionality. So let's try to think, what is the data of an image? What are the things that make up an image? Well, one thing are the pixels. This, uh, you know, really, if you're watching this right now, you should really just turn this video off and skip to the next one, because the next one or a couple from now, we're going to look at how to manipulate the pixels of an image or make up the pixels of an image from scratch. That's going to be a very powerful technique for uh, coming up with new ways of drawing and, and making stuff happen on the screen. The other pieces of information that an image might have it does have, in fact, is the width and height. This, these are crucial pieces of information. 
the, the width and height comes from the source image itself. What is the pixel resolution of that image? Is it some low resolution image we downloaded off the web? Did it come from some fancy high resolution camera? The pixel width and the pixel height, this is a sort of a key factor. And one thing you wanna remember is we've got a little processing window, you know, even if it was full screen, maybe it's at the most like 1920, by 1080, we don't need massive high resolution images to display on the screen. In fact, those might bog our program down and make it run slow. So something you might think about if you're loading a ton of images in your program is sampling them down in advance so, so that you have lower resolution images to work with so that your program runs faster and smoother. Okay, what is some functionality that might come with an image? Well, a piece of functionality that we really want is to draw that image to the screen. Uh, processing, if you think about the way it works, doesn't have too many objects that draw themselves to the screen. This is something we've been doing ourselves as we've been making examples. We make a bubble object that has a display function, but the processing draw functions are just commands really that we're executing. Rectangle, ellipse, line. The function for drawing an image to the screen is actually basically identical to rectangle. Rectangle, if you remember, needs an X and a Y which references the, which uh, uh, indicates the top left corner. Uh, I hope I'm recording this, I am. The top left corner of that rectangle, and then it needs a width and a height, and that rectangle will appear somewhere in our window once we call the rectangle function. The image function, which would happen in the draw loop, is exactly the same as rectangle, in that we can give it an x, a y, and a width and a height, this is where that image, that rectangle will go, with what width and what height. The big difference here is we, we now have the opportunity to reference an image that we've loaded from the hard drive, and that image itself will appear inside the rectangle. This means an image can be moved around the screen, just like anything else is, using variables and algorithms and all sorts of fancy things. It can be repeated in a loop and tiled. Anything you can do with shapes, you can do with images. The other thing that's interesting to note here is I spent all this time saying, oh, the image has a width and a height that comes from the raw source file itself. Yes, that's true, but somehow the image function, I can give it a width and a height. Processing will dynamically resize your image, stretch it, skew it, shrink it, grow it, whatever you do, whatever you, what, uh, how, well, based on however you specify that width and height. By the way, these are optional arguments. If you just give the x, y, you'll get the image at its raw resolution. The other thing I should point out, which you would probably write before you draw the image, even though I'm drawing it down here, is just as rect mode has a way of saying, hey, actually I want the reference point for that rectangle to be the center, uh, there's a function called image mode where you can now reference the image uh, by, uh, you can now draw the image relative to a different part of it. <laughs> like it's center, center, there we go. Okay, let's, I don't know, this has been going on for way too long and I don't know if you're still watching, but let's go and actually implement some of this in a quick sketch. We'll wrap this video up and then we'll go to the next one. <laughs> now I'm back over a lot of practice. I haven't recorded one of these in a while. Okay, um, all right, so let's go and find an image. I really should have done this in advance. I can't believe I'm doing this in the video. Bear with me, I don't know. Let's think of a cute animal that we like, like a uh, hedgehog. I don't know, is that a cute animal? I don't know why I thought of hedgehog. Hedgehog, not a hedge fund. Uh, that, eh, whoops, no videos help. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's kind of a cute animal. So let's get this uh, hedgehog here. Uh, view image. This is a little bit uh, ridiculous. I, I, I just have to keep going with this. I'm going to save this image, and I need to find my processing sketch, which I have in documents. Processing. <laughs> I really should have done this in advance. <laughs> Pixels, image one, data, all right, and let's just call this hog.jpg. There we go. Now, I'm back into my sketch, and I'm going to say uh, p image image, image equals load image, hog.jpg, and then uh, image hog zero zero, uh, background zero, and let's make our image, uh, our, our sketch like actually be a little bit bigger. And let's run this. Okay, ah, so what happened? What happened? First of all, <laughs> I wrote image hog, but I called my variable name img. Now, this actually brings up a little point. I don't know, I don't really love the variable name img, because then it's just going to lead me to say img1, img2. It's actually, even though it is an image, I, I think it actually would be useful to name it 
something about what it's going to display. So I'm going to call it hog. I'm going to save this and I'm going to run this and boom, we have, I can close the browser now, we have a processing sketch that displays <laughs> the image. Yay! Okay, this is pretty exciting. It's just sort of the background of the sketch. I could start drawing things on top of it. You know, like uh, if I wanted to try to figure out how to give it some green eyes, I could kind of like try to guesstimate where its eyes are and kind of put a certain, hey, wow, that was amazing. I got really, really close to where its eyes just by looking. All right, that was, I, I swear I did not practice that in advance. Um, okay, let's put this back over here. Now, let's look at a few more, slightly more interesting features. <laughs> um, for example, uh, I didn't actually include the width and height, as I mentioned you could do. So I'm going to actually give the width mouse X and the height mouse Y. And we can start to see, now I'm able to interactively skew the size of the image. Another thing that I didn't mention, a rectangle, right? You can set the color for a rectangle using fill. Fill, uh, right here I made an ellipse that was green, 0, 255, 0. The equivalent for an image is actually the tint function. So the tint function will color that image with a different tint, so to speak. So if I say 255, 0, 0, we're going to see a very red hedgehog right now. This hedgehog, now what's, what, what, what's important to realize here is we didn't actually affect the colors of this image. We are just affecting which, part, which parts of the image's existing color are we drawing. Every single pixel has an RGB color. I am now saying take for every single pixel ramp the green all the way down to zero, ramp the blue all the way down to zero. So if the, what I'm getting is the, kind of the, the red values of that image. And you can see here, if I were to do something like put mouse Y, uh, it, you know, as, as I go down the image, be, I start to get the green parts of the color. And, um, and if I put mouse X into blue, I can start to get, now I'm actually seeing the actual image itself. That doesn't mean it's I'm adding blue or I'm adding green. I'm just bringing up the actual existing uh, uh, pixel values of this image itself. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't like practice it and then do the video. I'm just rambling. Um, so I want to wrap this one up. Uh, I, I, I guess when I've done these in the past, I usually kind of give a little thing that you might think about trying to do before you want to go on to the next one. What I would say to you right now is set this up for yourself. Find an image, download it, get in your data folder, see if you can load it, see if you can draw it, and see if you can come up with a more creative or inventive way of affecting its position, its size, and its color through tint. So think about the same thing you first did. I had a bouncing ball moving around the screen or a bubble floating and moving back and forth, floating up. You can do that with an image now. Another tidbit that I'll just mention, if you load a PNG image that has a transparent layer, some uh, you can load JPEGs, PNGs, and probably some other formats. That tends to be what I use, JPEGs and PNGs. If that image has transparency, processing will retain that transparency. So your image doesn't necessarily have to be uh, it will always draw it as a rectangle, but we might not see it as so rectangular if, there are trans if there's a kind of transparent uh, edge to it. And we'll see how to add our own transparency to images later. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. This is a video that I've recorded, and I will hit stop and then record the next one in about two seconds.